Welcome to another engineering instructional snippet. The example problem for this video has two parts. In part 1 we will calculate the change in specific energies across a steam turbine with the given data. In the second part we will calculate the mass flow rate of the steam once given the turbine output shaft horsepower. In this example we will be using the English engineering system of units. Oh no! We're all doomed! So, here is our steam turbine. Our goal is to find the change in specific energies across the turbine. We will be calculating the change in specific enthalpy, specific potential energy, and specific kinetic energy. We want all of these in units of BTU per pound mass. We identify point 1 as the inlet to the steam turbine and point 2 as the outlet. The elevation, velocity, pressure, and enthalpy are provided for both points 1 and 2 as shown. The equations to calculate the changes in specific enthalpy, potential energy, and kinetic energy are shown here. Let's start with specific enthalpy. This is an easy one since the provided data is already in the desired units of BTU per pound mass. Plugging in the numbers we get 409.6 BTU per pound mass. Next is specific potential energy. Although multiplying the acceleration of gravity, g, times the elevation difference is a simple equation it is fairly involved to achieve the desired units. Note the use of the gravitational constant, g sub c, or more appropriately 1 over g sub c. We are also converting from pounds force feet to BTU. For all that work, we get a pretty small value for the change in potential energy across the turbine. Next is specific kinetic energy. Calculating the specific kinetic energy once again uses 1 over g sub c and the conversion factor from pounds force feet to BTU. Also once again the magnitude of the end result is rather small when compared to the change in specific enthalpy. The three results are shown here. As stated previously, the changes in both specific potential energy and specific kinetic energy are comparatively small when compared to the change in specific enthalpy across the turbine. A standard approach is to just ignore both the changes in potential and kinetic energy. Many academic problems are set up so you may not even have the data to calculate their values. It is expected that you know it is reasonable to neglect them in your calculations. Now let's proceed to the second part of this example problem. If the shaft output is 6700 horsepower, what is the steam mass flow rate through the turbine? First we need to find the specific work of the turbine. We apply conservation of energy across the turbine as shown here. Luckily we have already calculated the change in specific enthalpy, potential energy, and kinetic energy. All that is left is to solve for the specific work of the turbine. The results are shown here. Now that we have the specific work of the turbine we can use it to determine the mass flow rate of the steam. The turbine shaft horsepower is given. By definition, power is equal to the product of the quantities energy per mass and mass per time as shown here. We can now solve for the mass flow rate of the steam through the turbine. The results is 11.6 pounds mass per second. That's good! I hope you enjoyed this instructional snippet. If so, please like and subscribe. Thank you and have a great day.